Kansas Corn is excited to work with agricultural educators across the state of Kansas to implement components of CASE, Curriculum for Agricultural Science Education, as it relates to corn. Today, we will focus on the CASE Animal Science Activity 531 Energy and Feed as it relates to bomb calimetry. At the end of this lab, students should be able to know that nutritional value of a feed can be determined through feed analysis. They should also be able to conduct an inquiry-based experiment to determine the energy in feedstuffs. There are some key lab takeaways that students need to be able to demonstrate at the end of this lab. First, they are measuring energy in feed. Energy itself is derived through starch or sugars. There are several components of feeds that are not just starches and sugars, such as protein, that are very important to the animal. So this lab itself is not just valuing the value of a feed, but the energy available. Students will be using bomb calorimetry to be able to measure this energy, which is a standard industry practice. This lab is modified in a form in which students will be able to demonstrate such a results. There are several pros to using corn as a feedstuff. First and foremost, corn has a high energy content measured by metabolized energy in megacalories per kilogram of feed on a dry matter basis. This energy is derived from starch. A corn kernel contains a lot of starch through the endosperm. Livestock nutritionists find it difficult to replace the starch when supplementing corn for other needs. Corn is also able to be grinded down to a small micron size. Micron size is important when grinding due to the fact that increasing the surface area of feed does increase digestibility in foods. This is really important in industries such as dairy where the commodity is derived several times a day rather than just at a terminal end. Corn also has a lot of versatility as a commodity. For an example, you can use corn as a concentrate such as rolled corn, crimped corn, but it can also be used as a roughage such as corn silage or grazing cattle out on corn stubble for corn stover. There's also supplements such as corn oil uh, extract that are used in livestock feeds to basically dust the corn. Roughly 35 to 40 percent of corn used in refining goes to animal feed products. We'll go over some of those products here in a little bit. Every rose does have its thorn. Corn is not immune to this. Shelled corn is low in protein and low in fiber, which are some elements that we do need in a balanced livestock ration. Corn itself cannot be the sole feedstock of, uh, for any livestock. However, you can get higher uh, protein levels of corn through some different byproducts of corn um, processing. Ethanol prices have also made corn as a commodity more expensive per bushel. However, it should be noted that ethanol per, as a product has extended the use of distiller's grain throughout the grain belt, which is a higher protein concentrated feed. Some feedstuffs to be able to use in your classroom for this activity include cracked corn, which is corn that has been cracked to increase the surface area. This comprises all components of the original kernel parts, anything from the bran to the endosperm, the germ, etc., etc. The smaller parts are removed in a screening process, just as if you were mining for gold, 
uh, so you're left with the larger particle size. There's also steam-rolled corn. The corn is steamed in a steam cabinet and then rolled through a roller mill just as you were going to extrude a product in manufacturing. Then you have distiller's grain. Distiller's grain is a higher protein uh, base corn byproduct that is used um, to feed livestock. It is first primarily wet, um, but it can be dried down to be able to move out to further locations. Livestock producers that are close to ethanol production are able to use this uh, more regularly. Corn gluten is also available in wet and dry. It is a byproduct of corn processing. It does not conclude uh, gluten though. Uh, gluten comes from wheat, oats, and rye. So that is a uh, colloquial term that has just uh, been derived into, into corn itself. And then lastly, we have germ mill. Uh, germ mill is a byproduct of oil extraction in corn and is very high in protein. Uh, the germ is the only living part of the seed kernel uh, where this comes from. Germ meal is always added back to the corn gluten meal on a normal basis. We also have steam flake corn, which looks like smaller chips or corn flakes, if you will. It is steamed for 40 minutes and then flaked. Because it's its surface area and the fact it's a higher moisture corn, it is extremely highly digestible. And dairy producers love this as a feedstuff. We also have corn silage. Corn silage is, uh, is a roughage and it is green chopped corn. It is easier to store than other high energy commodities such as hay because you're able to store it in one large concentrated area. Corn stover and includes anything such as the leaves, stalks, or cobs. It is used a lot in biofuel production such as ethanol. However, when we feed it to livestock, it is usually consumed as, grain, as grazed corn stubble, i.e. releasing the cows out onto uh, an old corn field in the late fall after harvesting. Corn oil is a uh, feedstuff that is extracted from the germ and is a very high value product and is used a lot in uh, food pro uh, processed foods and uh, just in, in home uh, kitchen use. However, we can use it in feedstuffs as an additive to knock the dust off the grain uh, when mixing uh, the feedstuffs itself. As we take a look at a corn kernel, there are a few components that are extremely important to be able to identify. As you can see from this picture, most of the corn seed is starch and, and or corn gluten, quote unquote. There's very little of it that is a germ. In fact, 80% of corn on a dry matter basis is the endosperm. The germ uh, is the only living part of the corn kernel, 25% of which is corn oil. As you sit back and take a look at this picture, you can see exactly why corn is valued as a high energy feed. It contains a lot of starch. Starch digestibility is a large criteria set forth by livestock uh, nutritionists. One of the ways that you can monitor this is through studies through how an animal is able to use the starches and how long it takes to digest this. One influence behind this is going to be smaller particle sizes, as mentioned earlier, through micron size. Corn with a smaller micron size has a higher surface area and therefore is more digestible. It would be a neat extension activity for kids to be able to compare results of the same feedstuff at different micron sizes. We also know through Animal Science 415 that cells need sugars to respire through cellular respiration, but they cannot diffuse starches. Therefore, the cow's ruminant stomach does require to break down the starches through enzymes. This is a great 
opportunity as an instructor to tie back the components of 415 and and osmosis and diffusion back into how that occurs within the animal digestive system. Some quick tips. Consider doubling the sample size if you have had failure with the three grams of, of feedstuff samples burning. Go ahead and double it and see what happens. Next, make sure that your cans are the same type. If you have a large monster can and for one uh, lab station and a juice can for another, you have different surface areas and uh, metal components and they're going to conduct that, that heat energy from the feedstuff a little differently. Also make sure the sensor does not touch the side of the can itself. Feedstuffs you're going to want to dry in an oven or a food dehydrator. You can also dry them in a microwave if you dry them multiple times and try to get it to where they hit the heat the same um, mass three times in a row. Uh, if you dry them in the oven, do so at a low setting like 200 degrees Fahrenheit overnight. Uh, this really gets some moisture out and allows it to be able to burn a little bit easier. If you have small micron sized feeds, uh, consider using an aluminum foil boat as an iron gauze, which is great uh, for this lab, but however, it's not going to be able to catch the small particles, uh, such, as, um, such as a germ-based feed. Then consider also adding in a little bit of corn oil as a supplement. Um, a small amounts, a couple tablespoons to, a, uh, to the class sample, mix it in, and then dehydrate it. Uh, that will allow you to be able to just to catch that just a little bit easier. Students will never get perfect results with the setup in this lab as you would within a bomb calorimetry setup uh, within an animal science laboratory. However, there are a few things that they can do to be able to skew the results. One is improper use of a propane torch. Propane torches are a last resort, but if you pull one out, try not to hold the port propane torch directly under the can. Even if you're collecting the data afterwards, you are uh, putting heat in the area and allowing uh, that conductivity to happen. Um, and you're going to be able giving false results. Next is comparing data with other cans. As mentioned earlier, the feedstuff should be the only variable. The can that you use should not be a, a variable within this lab. This table includes information from the National Academies Press uh, that you can utilize for this lab. Uh, on the left-hand column are some common feedstuffs of corn, and we included a few uh, hay samples as well to, uh, for comparison. And the middle column is, um, is megacalories per kilogram. And on the right side column is the expected student results of calories per gram of what they will get on this lab. You'll notice a lot of students will come up with calories per gram in the range of 700 to 800. Um, that's, that's fine. Know that we're valuing the process over the product here, uh, because they're not going to be able to get the perfect results. However, part of the process is to be able to still make sure that their results rank the same as they would on those expected results. And can they identify the areas within this lab that would have kept them from getting the results that a lab with better equipment and more time would have gotten.